Hello everyone, <clears throat> my name is Michael Savoldi and a short while ago I placed a video on YouTube talking about uniform soul thickness, UST, as it relates to the soul plane. These are two terms rarely used in the farrier industry, but they have a lot of meaning. And once they're well understood, you can use them as they can be very beneficial to understanding what it is we're trying to achieve when shoeing a horse's foot. Now the soul plane can be very distortable. It can twist and bend. Uh, that will also cause the capsule to distort. So one of the keys to a distortion-free hoof capsule is to understand the twist and bends in the soul plane. The heel bend in the sole plane can bend either upwards or downwards. Uh, many of you have noticed the upward bend in the heel bend. We refer to that as um, sheared heel. Now the downward bend is a little different uh, scenario, but we still can explain it. And so it's important that we recognize these bends because remember that any bend in the sole plane will have detrimental effects onto the P3 bone, a very critical portion of the horse's foot that our industry doesn't pay much attention to. But remember uh, that pathology can be based on the plane of the P3 bone. And that usually means that the P3 bone will be uh, affected in some way. Um, I find in shoeing horses that it's very uh, useful to have goals, to set some goals. And over the years of studying feet, it, patterns develop. And these goals are based on patterns that you would find in a uh, foot that's functioning well. So also with goal setting, it brings the veterinarian and the farrier together. It also can bring the, the horse owner or the trainer together. By discussing our goals and working towards our goals, then we can see uh, it's helpful. Everyone seems to work together when they have a goal set in mind. It's always important to document everything you do and track. But these goal settings would be, for me, uh, distortion-free hoof capsule. That's something we are all trying to achieve. But once we recognize the influence the sole plane has on the hoof capsule, as far as distortion goes, then it makes it easier to understand the distortion, what's causing the distortion, and gives us a goal to work towards to level, to take an unlevel sole plane and make it level. Another goal is a level sole plane. Like I say, it can twist, the sole plane can twist and bend. And we need to concentrate on those bends and that twisting in order to create a level sole plane. It's quite possible, but it takes a lot of maintenance and a lot of teamwork to keep and maintain that sole plane. Then our distal phalanx or the P3 above the proximal border of the white line this represents elevation to the P3 bone. When the P3 bone is elevated above the white line, now, first of all, you can have too much elevation to the bone. That's more like your club-footed horse. Or very low elevation to the bone. That's your flat-footed horse. But when you look at feet that are functioning well and observe the arch, you will see quickly realize that how important the arch is to a foot and how that arch has a lot to do with foot shape. The shape of the foot is actually based uh, or is a product of the arch. So once you recognize when the arch is changing or learn how to maintain a, a decent arch within the horse's foot, then we can maintain horses and keep them working uh, much sounder for a longer period of times. So bone elevation is critical. Then we have a P3 bone as close to a level uh, plane as possible. This can be quite controversial 
because studies show that the P3 bone is in a positive palmar angle in the majority of horses. Well, just because something's a positive palmar angle doesn't mean that it's necessarily a good thing for the P3 bone because bone pathologies, if someone would like to destroy the toe of a P3 bone, all you need to do is put it in a positive palmar angle. And soon you will see changes taking, developing in the toe of the P3 bone. So keep in mind that a horizontally planed P3 bone has a lot less problems or damages. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, anatomy of the equine foot. This will be a very simple discussion about anatomy, but we'd like to explain or bring clarity to the sole plane and the uniform sole thickness. So in figure one is our equine foot and we can see the hoof wall. This foot has been trimmed to the sole plane. And so you're looking at the actual foot on this animal at that moment in time. When we remove the distal border of the hoof wall, we can expose the leading edge of the sole where it interfaces with the white line in the hoof wall. This uh, is approximately 11.5 millimeters, um, but that will vary. You can have thin, uh, that is the epidermal sole, so we can have thin soles or thick soles, just like a horse can have thick skin or thin skin. If we go one mother, one other step forward on figure three, we've removed the uh, hoof capsule or the wall and exposed the soft tissue. An interesting thing is if we look right at the distal border, distal being furthest away from the body, uh, that the distal border right in this area is level. I'm looking at figure three. And where the sensitive lamina ends, the sole begins. This is a key note that the proximal border is level. Proximal border of the sole plane. Um, and then since it is uniform in its vertical depth, they won't be truly uniform. There'll be a little bit of discrepancy in their measurement, but they appear to be very uniform. And you can see that our, on this foot, we have a level sole plane. And so we have our proximal border is level and our distal border is level. We can place the bone on top of the sole and now we can explain uniform sole thickness. This is all we're talking about. This does not represent the thickness of the sole body. That will vary. But this area of the foot is quite unique in that it will be fairly uniform in this vertical depth. So you're looking at the sole plane for this, the uniform sole thickness in this uh, uh, picture. Now we can remove the bone and look at the sole body. We are talking about the sole plane. So with this simple little anatomy uh, dissection, we've now introduced the uniform sole thickness and the sole plane. All right, we previously said that the leading edge of the sole represents the sole plane. Remember that this, the capsule is very uh, flexible. So when it flexes, the sole plane will flex. A horizontally planed hoof capsule, the foot is standing on a level ground surface. This is ideal for internal structures of the P3, uh, to protect the P3 bone and its leading edges. The proximal border of the sole plane is distortion free. So that's your take home message, is we must maintain our best, do our best to maintain a distortion free sole plane for internal hoof health. Let's uh, look at a right front foot on a newborn. Uh, to be honest, I dissected this foot a very long time ago. 
and uh, I believe it may have been stillborn. But it gave us a chance, an opportunity to do some investigation and some learn a learning process. Uh, so we're going to look at the soul plane in this foot. So going through our dissecting protocol by removing the distal border of the hoof wall, we now have exposed the soul plane. And it's fairly uniform in its vertical depth. The moisture line on such a, a young horse is very, can be variable. And so it's a little difficult to be dead on on your trim but you can be extremely close. But what's interesting about this foot is that it has a, it's born, it was born with a distorted sole plane. You can see that the epidermal sole has a bend in it. Okay, now we can look at the same fold, hind foot, um, and do a dissecting protocol just like we did before. And we can see that again, it has uniform sole thickness. But what's uh, interesting about this hind foot is that it is a level sole plane. So you can see that newborns can be born with a twisted sole plane or a level sole plane. So this continues through their whole life. Uh, different forces on the foot can cause it, internal forces and external forces can cause the sole plane to distort. And that's what I mean by we need to learn how to l take an unlevel foot and level it and maintain that level sole plane because it is quite critical when it comes to bone health. All right, here we're looking at a distorted sole plane. And it happens to be a very twisted foot. It also has a bend, and a heel bend. I can uh, put a different view for us so we can get a different perspective. All we've done here is trimmed length of wall away from the sole plane. Just follow the white line, basically. And we have exposed a distorted sole plane. Now, as farriers, we have been taught to trim a level foot. The purpose for the level foot is primarily so we put a level shoe on a level foot, we're not supposed to lose shoes. And yet we still lose shoes. But when we do that, a level foot trim does not expose the problems that the foot has. Trimming to the sole plane shows you a very distorted sole or hoof capsule. And that means that we have distortion to our walls. Once we can develop a level sole plane, this foot would trim level and you would have a very decent looking foot on the hoof, on the hoof as far as the hoof wall goes. You pretty much eliminate your distortion. So we must learn to recognize distortion to the sole plane in order to understand distorted hoof capsules. Now we can get to the nitty gritty of, of this discussion uh, for distortion in the heel area of the foot. So what we see here on this particular foot. If we would look uh, to the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a, a photograph of a distortion-free sole plane. Our sample, or our cadaver limb, shows us a downward bend in the sole plane in the heel area. This is quite common for hind feet. When the When the wall gets long, length of wall gets long in the heel area, it can bend forward or be pushed forward or bend forward. That can cause the sole to buckle in a downward direction. It'll also change the angle to the internal heel. So our whole foot structure is changing internally by having length of wall in the heel and get it, letting it get out of control and migrating forward it can cause all of this internal damage to take place. Uh, 
if we would like to look at the bone that would be associated with this foot, we can see a major disturbance to the bone in the palmar process area. We're losing bone. This, the ungual cartilages have ossified already in this foot. As you can see, it has side bone. But the side bone and partial bone is being demineralized due to the stresses that are placed upon it by having this downward bend in the sole plane. Also look at the very fine tip of the bone of the ungual cartilages here where they've ossified and bending down. These become very fragile and can break. And so that causes more stress or problems to the, to the P3 bone. We can also note that there's an upward bend in the heel area, commonly referred to as a sheared heel. This is due to length of wall. If you leave, if when we leave, when we leave length of wall in the heel area beyond the sole plane, two forces take place. First, we have the body weight pushing down onto the sole, causing this bend that you see right in this area. So the length of wall is stabilized the movement, so this can't do much because it's being supported by this length of wall, there's a void here which fills in, which due to the downward pressure of the foot, the length of wall now is forcing the hoof capsule to bend in an upward direction. Right here is the point of the bend taking place. This can vary. It could be further back or it can be further forward. But these will cause detrimental effects to the P3 bone. And if we look at the P3 bone, you can see that we're losing bone, demineralization to bone in the heel area. Both of these bends are negatives to the P3 bone. My concern when it comes to farrier science is bone health. We need to learn how to maintain bone health. In order to protect the bone, we have to understand distortions to the sole plane. Now, the foot on the left is common, as a, the downward bend on the foot on the left is very common for hind feet. That has a lot to do with stance. The foot on the right has an upward bend, and that's very common for front feet. But this specimen is the same. So you have the lateral heel on this foot is bending downward and the medial heel on this foot is bending upward. So you can have both. That's what I mean by looking at the twist, recognizing first you have to get away from your level trim. If you want to advance your work, if you want to bring your work to a higher grade, then you are going to have to dispel some of these myths that we have been taught over the years. This is why it's important for us to understand the internal functions of the foot and the internal movements of the foot. You can't see those on externally until you learn to what to look for. So let's go back now to setting a goal. Do a little review. Now we want to talk about a distortion free hoof capsule. How do we, what do we look for when it comes to distortion, a distorted capsule? Look at the arch and look at the bends in the sole plane. That will help you understand why the foot's distorted. goes back to a level sole plane. How important a level sole plane can be uh, for internal bone health, for internal health altogether. So we need to concentrate on establishing a level sole plane. That way we, have to, we will have a, a horizontally planed hoof capsule. The horse will be standing on a good base in relationship with the ground and how it stands. 
P3 bone above the proximal border of the white line. This is critical for circulation because as the bone descends into the foot and the arch changes, circulation for moisture for blood will change. A bone in a positive palmar ankle will have more compression to the uh, dermis uh, under the P3 bone in the toe area, causing bone loss to the toe, to the bone, and, and usually thinning of the sole in the toe area. A negative palmar angle compression to bone or bone loss in the uh, palmar process area, poor circulation in the heel area. So the closer we can have a um, P3 bone on a horizontal plane, the better the circulation will be within the foot and the health, more nutrients in and the healthier the foot should be. And then a P3 as close to a level plane as, I mean the P3 bone, as close to a level plane as possible. Again, this can be controversial because of studies done that just stated, the studies state, simply showed that it's a positive palmar angle. That's what the study showed. Did the study go into detailed depth on damages to the P3 bone or damages to the internal structures to the front part of the foot? No, I don't believe they did. So it's an interesting study, but it doesn't tell us much about how to create or maintain a healthy foot. Well, thank you. I hope this discussion will help uh, elevate our level of knowledge uh, for the equine industry for the benefit of the horse. I did notice that I was playing with my pencil a lot, rolling it around. <laughs> I hope that it wasn't too annoying for for most of you. Uh, it is very relaxing to for me to sit here and doodle <laughs> with my pencil. But uh, like I say, uh, there's so much to learn and to, to, uh, in farrier science. And I, sometimes I feel we're just scratching the surface. Orthotics can be a game changer for horses. See, we talked about the plane of the P3 bone. It's quite traditional uh, or standard to raise a heel on a negative plane P3 bone. Well, that can be detrimental to the horse when raising the heel. There's other ways of altering or changing pastern alignment. There's other ways of changing the bone elevation within the foot. Orthotics is a very good way to do that. Uh, but we must be very careful when applying an orthotic. Horses, we just, I, I've learned, I've had a, quite a learning experience. Horses need to be uh, made comfortable with the orthotic. We should not just put them in the foot, chew the horse and let it go. They have to be, uh, there's a, a learning curve for a horse when it's wearing an orthotic as far as how it walks and, and does things like that. So uh, in time, we will have that figured out and be, uh, and be able to take advantage of a full use of an orthotic once it's totally understood. So hopefully this lecture will help understand some of the distortions that take place or some of the reasons why a foot distorts. So in summary, I would like to say that we have to learn how to take an unlevel sole plane or an unlevel foot, if you want to say it that way, and make it level. So this is just day one of your next adventure. Okay. So thank you again. Have a good day.